Good morning, it's day three of my bike tour around Iceland. And before I show you where I'm going on the map, two things. The first one is there are a lot of flies in Iceland, like a lot. There might not be any mosquitoes, but trust me, they do make up for it with flies. And the second thing is I seem to have fixed the wobbly map. So hopefully for future videos, there won't be too much wobbling as I show you where I'm going. So today I'm starting from Thingvella National Park and I'm gonna be going up here along this rough road, turning left here and going to Borganes. And I believe it's gonna be 80 to 100 kilometers. There is some dirt road involved and that's about it. So I will show you some clips from the road and give you some commentary and speak in a bit. Cheers. So day three, and this is gonna be a long day cycle ride. I'm leaving the Thingvella National Park and we're going to Borganes. It's about 90 kilometers. There's a lot of uphill, as you can tell, because I'm out of breath already. It's about 600 meters of total ascent. I figure it's gonna take me about seven, seven and a half hours of cycling time. And I don't expect the road to be particularly busy. And although it's, there's a lot of mist in the air there, fingers crossed it doesn't actually rain. I've been cycling on this road for about half an hour and so far no cars, absolutely amazing. And I've got a kind of feeling that it's not gonna rain because it's still pretty early. So it's about, I don't know, like half eight or something. So when the sun comes out a little bit stronger, I think this mist will sort of evaporate. And yesterday was a hot day. It was 18 degrees at its hottest. So, so far the only annoyance of cycling in Iceland has been a lot of flies uh, last night and this morning. Apparently a low pressure system meant that there wasn't much wind and it didn't blow the flies away. Well, that's according to the park ranger. And miraculously, I was somehow better prepared than he was because I had my head net and he didn't. I don't know what that means. Probably doesn't mean anything really, does it? Probably just means I'm carrying too much crap on my bike as normal. Although in this one case, it came in useful. Fourteen percent incline, that doesn't sound very good, does it? Yeah, it was a bit of a killer ascent and obviously I couldn't outpace the flies, which is a bit annoying. I don't know if you can see them on the camera as I'm going down. Anyway, it's a short downhill section now and I'm about a third of my total ascent done and that's within 45 minutes of cycling, so tough but pretty good. lovely flat section on this plateau area and there's a little bit of blue sky over to my right I'm not going to my right though I'm going to my left and that's where it's still a bit misty This is the first bit of dirt road that I've come up to in Iceland. It's not too bad. 
bit of a shame it's uphill of course. Now that said, I'm almost at the highest point of the day with over half the elevation covered, which means that there's no significant climbs left now, which is a bit of a result. It's a very windless day and the wind is something I was concerned about for cycling in Iceland. I'm pretty certain that over the next 30 days I'm going to get some very bad wind and weather. Not wind because of eating beans, you know what I'm saying. road is a little bit rougher than I anticipated. I'm not sure how much longer I've got to go on it, maybe another 10 kilometers. It's a shame because there's a long downhill section now but I can't really go that fast. On the other hand, the weather's good. Well that's the dirt road over with. The first 10 kilometers of it were pretty bad. Uh, it got a bit better towards the end and I'm now on tarmac again. About 34 kilometers to go to Borganis. And feeling pretty good. Uh, it got a bit chillier, so I put on my, like an extra layer, my rain jacket. And I've got a blue hat underneath my cycling helmet. I don't know if you can see that. I'm, I'm sure I haven't got this camera angle very well. I'll get it sorted as I go through the tour. So, hopefully about, two hours until Borganis. And then about two minutes after I said it, it got a bit chilly, the sun came out and I got super warm and had to take all the layers off again. Which I think probably is gonna happen quite a lot. It was a little bit longer than 30 kilometers to Borganis because there was a tunnel I'm not allowed through. But I did realize that before I got there, thankfully. So a little bit of dirt road, and then I've got to kind of do a slightly longer route to circle around. But it should be flat, apparently. We will see. Bit of a GPS error, so I've had to go a slightly longer route around as well now. Kamut, which I'm using for navigation, has been pretty good so far. Uh, but obviously, when a GPS goes wrong, you've got to reroute and hope you can reroute. Okay, so back on track again now. See, that's what she said as well. I think uh, Iceland's a little bit like Greece, where it might say that there's a right of way on the map. If a farmer locks two gates at either end of the right of way, well, you can't really use it, can you? So I think I've got about another 15 kilometers left. So I have to 
kind of go all the way around to a bridge, I guess it is, to cross a big river and then head to Borganis. And from here, I followed sealed roads all the way into Borganis. So the idea behind heading to Borganis was that I would stay there overnight and stock up at the supermarket, which I would need for the, and I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, Sneisfelness Peninsula, um, as I would be cycling around there for a few days. The campsite at Borganis was a very basic one. It was next to the main road and there wasn't a shower. So there was a cooking area and there was a toilet, but there was no shower on site. And in fact, it turned out to be more expensive than the campsites that I'd stayed at previously. But there we go. Uh, campsites in Iceland are a bit hit and miss sometimes, but you do get used on this Snaysvelness and Westfjords that some of the campsites don't have showers. Anyway, all told, a pretty good day's ride, 90 kilometers in the bag. You can check the route I took out on Komoot, and I'll leave a link below. And at the end of this video, you will also see a screenshot of the route I took. Thank you very much for watching. If you could like and subscribe to the channel, that would be awesome. And I will catch you in the next video. Cheers for now.